Hey and welcome back to the Akarija YouTube channel. I recently made a Skyline diffuser. I have it up behind in the DJ booth area of my room right now. These are supposed to disperse sound waves and really help with the treatment of a room. Obviously where I have it now, it's not really doing a whole lot, but I thought it would be a fun little project to build one this quarantine season. This video is gonna be a sort of quick tutorial on how I made mine. It was actually really easy and if you wanna make it even easier and don't really care about how it looks. You can even skip a lot of the sanding and staining, which added a lot of time to the build of mine. So first up, you're gonna need some materials and some tools. So to make my diffuser, which is 18 by 24 inches, you're going to need the following. Four two by two by eights. I use Naughty Pine, A, because it's cheap in Canada, and B, because I was gonna be staining it, and so having that variation with the knots and texture would look really cool once I put the stain on it. You can really just use whatever is available where you are. You'll need some stain. I went with a chestnut color, some good quality wood glue, some steel picture hanging wire and the hardware to go with it, and finally, you'll need some sort of backing. I went with a two by four foot MDF hardboard panel. I sanded down one side to make sure there was a nice surface for the glue to adhere to. And I cut this down to the right size for my diffuser. You could also go with a thin quarter inch piece of plywood if you wanted, but I thought the MDF board was a little bit lighter and it was also cheaper, so. Tool wise, you'll need an orbital sander or sandpaper and a lot of time and muscles. A saw, I used both a miter saw and a Japanese dozuki saw. I used a workmate bench to hold everything in place while I was working on it, but you can just like use the floor. And lastly for the stain, you'll need a brush and a rag. I used a disposable foam brush, but you can just use whatever. So to begin with, you'll need to plan out your build. I wanted to make my diffuser 18 by 24 inches, which would fit the best in my space. So like I said, I bought the two by four foot backing, so I had to cut this down to 18 by 24. And then I also needed to figure out how many two by twos I'd need. There are some online calculators that let you input the width of your columns and set the max length you want to use. So I used one of those. Keep in mind, whatever wood you're buying might not actually be the exact size that it's named. It's usually a little bit smaller. Once you've inputted this information into that calculator, it'll kind of spit out a square grid of the layout that it recommends you use for optimal diffusing. And it will also tell you how many of each size piece. Because I wanted mine to be kind of portrait, not a square, I just duplicated the first few rows and added them onto the bottom. You'll then need to add all of this up to get the total length of lumber that you need to buy. Don't forget to add enough extra to cover the loss you'll have from your saw blade. I also didn't want any zero pieces that are marked on that calculator because I didn't want you to see the backing through it. I wanted everything to kind of have that face of the knotty pine. So I also added enough to be able to replace all the zeros with a super thin sliver of pine that I could stain. So first things first, you're gonna to want to sand down the sides of your lumber and make sure they are all nice and smooth so the stain takes nicely. I started with 80 grit, nice and rough. Since I'm using knotty pine, it's quite rough on some of the knotty areas, so spending a bit of extra time and care there is important, especially since I want the knots to really shine through in the stain and be kind of a feature. Because I bought these during Corona times and I guess everyone's doing DIY stuff, Home Depot was pretty low on stock on these. So I didn't really get the luxury of picking the nicest, smoothest pieces. So if your hardware store has more selection, then I definitely suggest picking some nice, smooth pieces to make your sanding a lot easier. You're gonna wanna do this on all four sides and all four pieces of your lumber and keep upping the grit as you go. So we're onto 120 now. And up one more time to 220. Once you've sanded down all your pieces, you'll want to get a wet cloth and wipe down each side of your lumber. This is to get rid of all the dust from sanding so that the stain will take nicely. After you wipe it down with the wet cloth, you can go over it again with a sticky cloth if you have one. Once the wood is dry, it is time to stain it. Pretty simple, shake the can, open it up and liberally apply. Then wipe it off. You'll wanna do all the sides and of course do multiple coats. I found two was good enough to get the color I wanted. And you might notice that the stain color changed halfway through here. I had some ebony stain already at home and I tried to use that, but I hated it. So I went back to Home Depot and picked up the chestnut color. Cute. After a couple hours, those will be dry and then we can get to cutting. So I'm starting with my biggest pieces and I've drawn a line in the right spot on my lumber and clamped this random piece of wood here to be a guide. 
just to speed things up a bit. For the smaller pieces, I couldn't use the miter saw accurately, so I switched to my Dazuki, which I think actually worked way better and was way more satisfying. So if I was gonna do this again, I may have just used the Dazuki the whole way through. Measure and mark where you want your cuts and then slice away. After a lot of cutting, it is now time to sand down the faces. I propped a circle sander between my feet and gave each one a quick spin. My whole body was buzzing after this, but it worked, so I guess it was worth it. So I'm missing some footage here, but I went ahead and stained the tops. Keep in mind that since the tops are cut against the grain, they're gonna be more porous and absorb the stain more quickly. So I only needed one coat here to get the same color as the sides and then glue them down. Like I mentioned, I sanded one side of my board so that the glue would adhere better. I also stained the edge of the board to match and then yeah, just glue, pretty self-explanatory. I'd suggest laying out your pattern next to your board before you start gluing. And then I'd also say it would be best to start with one horizontal line and one vertical line, and then you can fill in the rest from there. Finally, give the edges a quick wipe down with a wet paper towel. And then all that's left is fixing on the hardware and then you're done. If you're actually using this in a studio, which I am not, you may want to opt to screw it directly into your wall or something like that. The way I've done it hypothetically could rattle if I had a lot of noise in here, but it is pretty heavy and in my room it works totally fine. So I don't know, I think it's fine, but if you wanna be extra safe, then do it the other way. And then to finish it off, I gave it a quick rub with some orange oil to kind of get rid of any leftover dust that was there from the sanding and to just brighten and warm the whole thing up. And voila, that's my diffuser. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Obviously, if you want to save some time, you can skip all of the sanding and the staining, but it just won't look as pretty, so the choice is yours. I just love how the grain really came out with the stain and the knotty pine just looks really pretty. So that's it for this tutorial. Let me know if you guys are gonna try and build one of these, if you have a studio that could use some treatment or if you're just building it kind of for decor like I did. I'll link down below the calculator that I used and let me know in the comments if you guys do build one of these, what you think of mine, and also subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I will see you in the next Akarija video. Thanks and have a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays.